You know, I, I, uh, I did a little bit of thinking about, uh, you know, kind of a few of the things that I wanted to say, uh, you know, when I got up here. And, and um, just, just to kind of give you a little bit of, of, of background, um, you know, I'm, I'm a first generation uh, Canadian. I, I was actually, you know, born in a small rural community in Saskatchewan called Davidson, 1,100 people. My parents immigrated from Turkey. My father came as a country doctor. And uh, I'm proud to say in uh, November, he retired after 52 years of full-time practice in rural Saskatchewan. My mother came in 1967 as a young bride, didn't speak a word of English, and uh, learned uh, watching Sesame Street with us kids. <laughs> and uh, went on in 1976 to be the first ever woman elected to a rural municipal council in Saskatchewan. And if you think of that, 1976, an immigrant Muslim woman elected to a rural council, and she served 27 years in rural municipal politics. So, you know, that kind of background, I think, kind of instilled in me, you know, Sue, a little bit different than your rural upbringing, actually, uh, you know, public policy and jobs on Main Street and, you know, that sense of community and the sense of public service, you know, really was something that, you know, I was actually raised with and, and um, you know, something that, you know, was kind of ingrained in us as, as something that was you know, truly not only uh, optional, but expected. And, you know, I, I remember, you know, very early on, uh, you know, my father actually, you know, pointed out a quote for me from uh, Sir Winston Churchill, which, uh, you know, he said, son, the price of greatness is responsibility. And, uh, you know, that was a quote that kind of has hung with me for a long time. And, you know, public policy was, you know, for me, starting my career, uh, you know, I did an MBA and, you know, expected I was going to end up in big corporate America with a, a US MBA. And, and I kind of felt myself being pulled back to wanting to serve the public. And so I started my career in government, uh, actually started at the Fed side and then went to the province for about uh, five and a half, six years. And, you know, I can say one thing that many people don't make that connection between, you know, business and public policy. And, and you know, the public policy background was the perfect training ground for international business. You know, so when I think back at all of the things I was able to uh, get, ex um, you know, exposed to, you know, the generational opportunity that this country, uh, you know, has in front of it in both agriculture and, and sustainable agriculture and uh, transportation infrastructure, you know, with a gateway and corridor strategy that this country needs to develop, you know, is something that I'm very, very excited about in terms of uh, being able to contribute to that. And it's kind of been an area where I've focused most of my effort over the last you know, number of years, um, you know, in terms of both trade policy, you know, international trade promotion and, and market development, but more importantly, recently linking in that whole thing to the legislative framework of, you know, the transportation system and then the infrastructure and transportation and, and, and gateways. So, you know, as, as I go through and, and I want to kind of thank a few people, but um, I actually do want to, you know, do a shout out to, you know, someone who you all know very, very well, uh, David Emerson. I don't think David is here tonight, but David has been somebody, he was my very first uh, minister when I was, uh, you know, working as a private sector CEO, you know, advising government, and Mary Lucy Morin, who's here with us today, she was my deputy minister, and I always say that she sentenced me to 15 years of public policy, because I've been working with her for 15 years on different things, uh, and, uh, and Roy Romano, can't uh, forget, I went back to the province and worked with Roy for a number of years, but um, trade policy and public policy you know, has to be deliberate and has to be well thought out. You know, when, when I turn around and look at, you know, today, I think that, you know, I want to caution everybody. I think we're at a crossroads, right? As a country, we're at a global crossroads where Canada has a chance to be a leader. The question is we have to decide whether we want to be. Sustainable, sustainable natural resources is a key to prosperity for Canadians. And, uh, you know, I celebrate this advantage. You know, I celebrate, you know, the fact that, you know, we are doing things, you know, in let's say in sustainable agriculture that should be celebrated, you know, in terms of a three crop rotation in Western Canada. We have uh, cereal grains, uh, oil seeds and pulse crops, lentils, peas, chickpeas and beans. Lentils uh, naturally fix nitrogen in the soil. We use zero minimum tillage technologies that allow for soil conservation. We have the lowest greenhouse gas footprint of any crop grown in the northern tier states or Western Canada. That's something that we have to celebrate, and I hope that you'll all be as proud of it as I am, because it's a matter of competitiveness, and it's a matter of giving us an opportunity 
to meet the challenge that we're going to face as a, as a world. You know, in the next 40 years, we have to produce as much food as the world produced in the last 10,000 years of civilization. That is a quantified statistic by the UNFAO. So when we turn around and consider feeding 9.8 billion people and, you know, the footprint of agriculture and uh, the opportunity that is, is uh, basically presented by the fact that Canada has what is scarce in the world, water, land, and work ethic. So when we turn around and look at those natural advantages, I take that as a challenge. And I take the recognition of an award like this as a challenge to continue the work that I've, uh, you know, been working on for a number of years. People sometimes ask me, you know, whether I'd consider a life in uh, politics or in public service. And I say, probably not. <laughs> uh, the ability of the private sector to drive change is truly powerful, right? The ability to sit on this side and not be economically reliant on the government that I'm advising is a position that I want to maintain. And I think that that's, you know, part of what we have to do as, as you know, business leaders and many of you as public policy leaders is encourage the private sector to truly not only get involved but to understand the importance of the work that, that all of us are doing in terms of how that, you know, links in to prosperity for all Canadians. So back to, uh, you know, somebody that I have a, a, a tremendous amount of, of, uh, of uh, fascination with, uh, Sir Winston Churchill. I'm going to quote him again. Some people, um, some people see private enterprise as a predatory tiger to be shot. Others look as a cow they can milk. Not enough people see it as the healthy horse pulling a sturdy wagon. So I want to encourage all of you, you know, recognize the opportunity, seize the opportunity, and recognize that we have a lot of good days ahead. So thank you very much.